Hi everyone, this is Pete here. So today we're going to talk about the current HDB trends and how is this going to impact the broader market. And for those of you who are looking at buying your next property, I will also share with you exactly what type of property that you should be buying. Okay, so let's dive straight into it. Okay, so the last month I was quite busy. I was at ICT and then I bring my children for a holiday, right? Right now I'm back and whenever I'm back for a small timeline, right? A four period of time. Uh, I realized there will be new news about HDB million dollar flats. Okay, so what we saw was uh, in late August, we had another 1.2 million five room flat, okay, in the Buntiong area. And then we have the HDB executive apartment at Bandimir, right? We're going for 1.3, okay? And in fact, uh, this month itself, right? Uh, August, uh, already saw 104 units sold, okay? 104 units sold. And they say actually this is a decrease, you know, from the July 120. So though a bit less. Uh. But the thing is this, if you look at the statistics, you look at the amount of HDB that's being sold, right? Yes, we did see a drop in August, but the overall trend is undeniably going up, okay? So now we are seeing about $100 million HDB per month. And guess what, this was supposed to be a down month, you know, guys, August is actually the Hungry Ghost Festival. This was supposed to be a down month and we are seeing 100 units still, okay? So if every month 100 units are, guys, we are going to be on track, right, for more than a thousands of such units or the million dollar HDB, I call it MHDB, uh, okay? More than a thousands per year, right? So August, yes, we did see the price increase dropping, right? Uh, not that it went down, but it slowed down to 0.5% increase and overall transaction volume uh, dropping. But if you look at the overall resale volume, I would say that it is still well within expectations, right? It is about the same as what we would expect uh, last year in August 2023. So there isn't a lot of dampening, although the news is trying to drum out that, oh, you know, HGB prices, the growth is slowing down. This is the Hungry Ghost Festival. I do expect the September timeline to increase from here, okay? So at the same time, there was also a recent cooling measure, but I would say this is like a little cool cooling measure, not, not a big cooling measure, not an ice age type of cooling measure, okay? Because uh, of this new rule called the 75% LTV. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, what happens is that last time for HDB loan, you can take up to 80%. However, right now you can only take up to 75%. So that means that uh, buyers can uh, only take 75% and they have to fork out another 5% in cash in order to make the down payment. So the overall idea is that we don't want people to be over leveraged and hopefully by lowering the loan percentage, we can also moderate the prices. But would it be enough to lower the prices? And I would say the answer is no, right? Just no. Why? Because let me just give you a few factors. Uh. Number one is that the HDB cooling measures is only for those who are taking HDB loan, okay? Which it already has a salary cap of $14,000. So that means you are not really dropping the buying power of those who are very rich, you know, buying all the million dollar HDB. You are just dropping the buying power of those who barely or just nice qualify for HDB loan, okay? And at the same time, they also have increased grant. You know, there's an increased uh, ESG grant. So that will likely push prices higher because you are just throwing more money to the fire, right? But the good news is that, of course, this grant right now is mainly going to enhance for the lower income, which I'm very happy, right? I think this is the right move to help the lower income. But I just want to say that uh, it, it wouldn't really affect the HDB prices by dropping the loan amount by 5%. Why? Because the cash-rich buyers are really not affected. They're not deterred, okay? And... At the same time, if you and your spouse, the combined income is already more than $14,000, when you buy a resale HDB, you are already taking a bank loan, not an HDB loan. So you are already at 75% loan. So nothing has changed for you, okay? I would say in this case, the only loser, all right? I would say loser, but the only one that's affected negatively uh, are buyers who are buying with less than $14,000 income and they are buying with the HDB loan, right? So now they just need to fork out more. And from a analyst perspective, I'm not sure if this is the group that's really pushing the prices higher, right? So do we really want to lower their purchasing power by implementing the 75% loan? I'm not quite sure. Okay, overall, I speculate, uh, this is my speculation. I think that the government is just trying to align 
the loan amount for either you're buying uh, through HDB loan or private uh, bank loan, right? So that everything is consistent. So doesn't really have an impact in the property price over here. With all these news coming up, we are seeing a lot of million dollar HDB and also slightly lower loan for those of you who are taking HDB loan, right? What would I do in this case if I'm in the situation of buying an HDB flat? Number one, if I can wait, I will actually go for a BTO, right? If I can wait, I will go for BTO. Why? Because BTO is still heavily subsidized. So that is where you can still get a bit of uh, up upside uh, when you sell it after MOP. But do take note right now the MOP for certain areas uh, under the new schema of uh, prime and plus flat is going to be 10 years instead of 5 years. So that may not be something that is very welcome. But I'm just looking at it from a pure perspective. If I can wait, I just go BTO. Okay? But if I can afford it at the same time, I will actually go for private property. Why? Because the truth is private property is still much less regulated. It is almost unthinkable that the government will come in with a very heavy hand, just like how they regulate HDB on the private property segment. Because if they do that, then there is no distinguish factor uh, between private and HDB. Right? So I don't think they will do that, which allows the HDB prices to still uh, go up from here. And plus, with all the million dollar HDB flat, uh, after they sell, right, what do you think they're going to do? A huge portion of them are likely going to upgrade. I read some stats before that about 30 to 40% of HDB sellers do upgrade to a private property instead of buying back to a HDB. So this money, this million dollar HDB money will actually flow into the private property. Now the next one is, if I cannot wait, but I can afford it. Okay, sure. If you really want to go for resale, I think that is something that you still can consider, but that will really be my last choice. Okay. And fourth, if I cannot wait and I cannot afford to buy right now, Actually, to me, renting is also an option, right? I know out there a lot of people will say, AP, hey, you know, renting is like throwing money down the drain, which I agree because it actually doesn't add to the capital or the equity of your house. But just hear me out here, right? Is that when you're renting, you can actually save some money along the way. For example, right now, interest rate is very high, right? You're paying very high interest and you cannot afford to buy, let's say, a very big condo to house your whole family. So instead of buying a, a $2.5 million condo, why don't you just spend about maybe four dollars $5,000 per month to go and rent a same size condo, right? So that you can actually slowly build up your capital to buy that house in the future, right? So there are a lot of things you can do and that's what I do with my clients on a one-on-one -on -one basis, right? To share with them what are the plans that they can think about because a lot of times where people are looking at property, they are looking at it from a very direct angle. They are not able to analyze and look at it and say, hey, what are the alternatives I can do? So one way I would think about is that, hey, can you rent a place first? Or in fact, if you don't need to rent a condo, can you rent an HDB first? Maybe it's cheaper, right? And at the same time, build up your capital, build up your income level so that maybe three years, four years down the road, you can actually finish up the rental and then buy a place to stay for yourself, right? So these are all the solutioning that I will create for my, my clients on a one-on-one -on -one basis because I look at property numbers every day, la, I eat, sleep, all these, all these numbers, right? And I think about all these solutioning, okay? And really, uh, at the end of the day, if all this doesn't work, I say, hey, Pete, I really don't want to rent. Uh. Another option is uh, just like this picture, la, continue to stay with your parents, okay? Uh, whether they will be happy or not too happy, I'm not sure, okay? But... At the end of the day, if you can stay at a place without paying rental while you build up your capital to buy a place, that is also a possible solution, okay? So I just want to share right now what are the news in the HDB market and also what are the possible things that I would do, right, if I'm looking at buying an HDB. Honestly, if I can afford it, I'll go into private property to escape all these regulations first, right? But if I cannot, then actually there are many solutions that you can think about, all right? So that's all I want to share in this video. Once again, just want to do a quick shout out for my one-on-one -on -one session. For those of you who want to come on to my one-on-one, -on -one, where you want me to plan for your property journey, tell you what are the good properties that you can consider and making sure you have the highest chance of achieving profit at the end of the day, right? This is my one-on-one -on -one, uh, application. Right now, we are only limiting to 15 per month. Uh, I'm happy to say that for September, we just opened up another 15. So for those of you who want to, to come on this one-on-one -on -one consultation with me, right? To find out more about your property journey where I analyze in depth about your property plans, right? You can apply right here. First come, first serve. So that's all I have for this video. Do you agree with my analysis? Or if you're not, do you have any other solutions, please put it down so that everyone can share the wisdom together and think of a better plan, housing plan for everybody in Singapore when the housing is particularly challenging. Okay? 
So that's all I have, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.